Hi, you guys. It's Yaz. And I want to do a follow-up to screening the narcissist because I did a, a reel on Facebook where I talked about how you have to screen these people and look for the red flags. So I said, when you buy a car, you get it checked out by a mechanic to make sure that it's a good running car. When you buy a house, you get it checked out by an engineer to make sure that the house doesn't have any problems before you buy it. And when you get a life partner, you need to do a background check on them as well. And what a lot of people misunderstood is they thought I just meant, okay, you go to one of these services online and you do a background check and you see if they have a criminal record or something like that. That is not going to tell you everything. Yes, it's important to do background checks because you want to see if somebody has a criminal record or it'll tell you if they have bankruptcies, which shows they're financially irresponsible. It'll also show you if they've had many different addresses, they weren't stable, they're always moving around, okay? But you've got to dive in deeper into somebody's character, okay? And that is not always going to show on a background report. So how are you going to know, right? You're going to know by the questions that you ask that narcissist and by asking other people that know that narcissist. It's kind of like when you do a criminal investigation on somebody and they have somebody who they suspect of doing something, committing a murder or something. What are they going to do? They're going to ask around to different people that know that person to find out different kinds of bits of information on that person. Were they an angry person? Did they fight with people all the time? You know, um, were they, you know, friendly? Were they, you know, combative? Were they irresponsible? So what you need to do when you first meet somebody, you, first of all, you got to move slowly. A narcissist is going to make the relationship go rapid fast because they don't want you to see all these kinds of things when they have skeletons in their background. And I always tell people, show me where you've been and I will tell you what you are. Okay. And the other thing too, is a lot of people get mixed up with people that are married or are still in relationships. Ding, ding, you guys, you guys, you got to stop listening to words that come out of somebody's mouth. Okay. You want to check them out inside out. And another way you want to check them out is by social media. Okay. Use social media to your benefit. And what do I mean by that? I mean, get on their social media and see what's going on on there. Now, if you're dealing with a very slick narcissist, they're not going to post anything uh, about what they're doing or, you know, they, they're not going to show their friends list. They're going to be very, very secretive about a lot of things. They're going to post generic things. But there's certain things that you could pick up on social media. When you see their posts and you read the comments, you'll see if somebody is commenting a lot about something or somebody is giving them kissy emojis who could be a close friend or somebody they have a situationship. You could see their relationship status. Are they posting a relationship status? And a lot of narcissists don't post any status whatsoever. And why is that? Because they have a lot of different supply on their page. So they may be in a relationship, but they're not going to post it necessarily on their page because they don't want the supply to know what's going on. Or what they'll do is they'll put you on a dummy page, a catfish page. So you got to look at that page that you're added to and say, oh, this was just newly created. Oh, there's nothing on this page. And then that's a red flag. Okay, this is a backup page because most people that are on Facebook you know, they have a little history on there. So these are the things that you look at, okay? And a lot of times when you're dealing with a narcissist, they'll say, oh, I don't do social media, which is a flat out lie, okay? Very rarely does somebody not have social media whatsoever, okay? Grandparents have social media. So you're nine times out of 10, I'm not saying everybody, but nine times out of 10, you're dealing with a liar who doesn't want to put you on their page because there's something there they don't want you to see, okay? So that is a red flag, okay? They have something to hide or they don't trust you. So when I talk about, you know, diving into somebody's background, in other words, when you're talking to that narcissist, 
You want to ask questions without coming off as an interrogator. Because if you come off as an interrogator, that narcissist is going to be very, very guarded with you. So you have to do it kind of in passing and you have to be very, you know, clever about it as, you know, that you're not really trying to dive in too deep. In other words, you may ask a question, but don't be too much with it or they're going to think that you're trying to, you know, size them up. You always want the narcissist to think you're naive and a little stupid because when you do that, they're going to, you know, they're not going to be guarded and they're going to be more, um, you know, they're not going to be so, so nice and accommodating because they feel that you're naive. So they're going to mess up. All right. Like when you meet somebody and you tell them right away, oh, nobody's going to pull a wool over my eyes or nobody's going to fool me. Well, guess what you're doing? You're giving them a heads up to be extra guarded and to manipulate you better. So that's the stupidest thing you can do. The best thing to do is kind of keep your mouth shut and tell them very little about yourself. Talk on the surface and you want to find out what's going on with them, okay? And no matter what they tell you, don't be reactive about it. Just, you know, be like, oh, okay, you know, like you might want to ask them something about like, oh, what was your relationship like with your ex? You know, was she, you know, was she controlling? Was she jealous or something? And then, and then you shut up and you let them talk and you don't ask too many more questions. You let them feel comfortable with you, but you only do this once you get that comfort level with that narcissist. Okay. Because if you bombard them with questions in the beginning, they're going to be very guarded with you. All right. So now once you start dating this person, you also want to, you know, maybe be around where they hang out. Where does this person hang out? That tells you a lot about somebody. And a narcissist is going to play innocent like, oh, I never go out. Oh, I never do anything. Okay. And what they don't want you to do is they don't want you to see their hot spots where they, they so they're not going to, let's say they go to a bar every week. They're not going to want you to bring you down there because the pe- people will come to you and might say something to you, okay? So they're going to be very on the surface, but eventually the more you go out with this person, the more they may bring you around their people, okay? Which, by the way, could be their flying monkeys. So you got to be real careful when you're dealing with these other people, you know, because whatever you tell them, they're going to go back and tell the narcissist. So be careful of any questions that you ask the narcissist people or flying monkeys because they're going to go back and ask the narcissist. So you have to be very, very discreet about it, you know? And, you know, like you might want to say something to them like, oh, I heard their last relationship was awful or something. Just something in passing and see what these people say, okay? You also want to look at somebody's childhood. You're not going to get that on a background report that you run online. You're not, I'm telling you, you guys, somebody's background is like, that's the blueprint of that person. What was their home life like? Did they come from a toxic home? Were their parents narcissistic? Did they always feel like they never got attention or something like that? They never felt validated. And the irony is a lot of these narcissists that come from toxic homes and have narcissistic parents will talk highly about their parents because they don't want to look at them as toxic or they can't acknowledge that their family was toxic. So you can't say one fucking word that's negative about their family or they will jump down your throat. Believe me when I tell you, I know from experience, they will jump down your throat. So you've got to be like a bystander and just let them talk and observe, okay? Because they will slowly open up about things about their childhood and, you know, maybe they dealt with neglect. Maybe their parent was neglectful or maybe their parent was selfish or maybe their parent was not around for them or maybe there was fighting in their childhood All of these things have an impact on a child and that child is who you're dealing with right now, okay? So you want to see where has this person been, okay? The other thing you want to look at is you want to look at, you know, their family and see, you know, are these people that you could get along with or are they toxic as well? Because the first thing that I've got to tell you, you guys, is if you're dealing with somebody who's got toxic parents, 
run, don't walk, okay? Because you're going to deal with a narcissistic in-law and they will make your life hell and they will try to break up your relationship. And I got to do a podcast on this, narcissistic in-laws, okay? Because people just look at the one person like, oh, I'm just dealing with them. I don't have to deal with their family. You're going to have to deal with their family if they have narcissistic parents and they don't realize their parents are narcissistic and they don't have boundaries with these people, okay? So when you marry that person, you are marrying their fucking family, okay? And I'm speaking from experience, okay? I have firsthand knowledge on all this. So what I'm trying to tell you is look at the family, look if they're toxic, look how they treat you. Are they, you know, are they nice to you? Are they open with you or are they fake and phony or they're just flat out nasty, okay? These are all reasons that you need to back off. So these are all things that you're looking at when you're trying to do a background check on somebody. The other thing that you want to check out, and also if you're dealing with somebody who says, oh, I'm going through a divorce or something like that, you better see those fucking divorce papers and you better make sure that they are certified by the court. Okay, we don't go by word of mouth. We want to see documentation that is documentation by the court and not a Xerox copy that they could um, have changed and manipulated to show you. Okay, and some of them are very clever and will do that. And they're still married. Okay, they're still married. First of all, you don't mess with that. You don't mess with somebody unless they are fully divorced because you're dealing with somebody that number one is not single and you know number two can go running back to their ex at any time they are legally bound okay legally bound you don't want to deal with that nonsense all right now when we talk about you know doing a background check on somebody the other thing too with the regular background checks online, it is good to see if somebody is financially stable or they've had bankruptcies. In other words, you could be dealing with a narcissist that tells you, oh, I have so much money, this and that. And then you do a background check and you see they got a ton of bankruptcies or they can't hold a job or something like that. Or they've moved around all over the place because they can't stay in one place too long. That is important information, okay? And criminal record is also important information, but there's a lot of criminals out there. I want to note this. There's a lot of criminals out there that don't have a criminal report, okay? So you could still be dealing with somebody like that, and a narcissist has a criminal mind. And what is what do I mean by that? Narcissists are thieves, okay? They will try to rob you. If they don't rob your possessions, they will rob your soul, okay? They will try to suck the life out of you. They will rob your children in court. If they will rob things that are around your house, they will try to manipulate you for money, some of them, okay? So the point is, you guys, you've got to look at all of these different things when you're diving deep into somebody. And the best way when you're diving deep into somebody is to find out about the exes, okay? So we got the childhood. You've got to find out about their exes. How long were their relationships? Were they able to be in a long-term relationship or did they bounce around all the time? Look at how they talk about other people. Are they always criticizing and judging other people? Because if they're doing that, they're going to do that with you, okay? And a very important factor is... And the, the most important one, you guys, is how does this person fucking fight, okay? This is it. This is it. This is your red flag as to whether, you know, you're doing a background check on somebody, whether they could be a narcissist. How did they deal in their other relationships when they had an argument with somebody? Okay, and I'll give you an example because I was dealing with somebody you know, that I was trying to get to know. And he told me a story that his ex was very jealous. And every time she used to bring up things, he was like, you know what? She goes, he, she was always bringing up things, bringing up things, bringing up things. He said, and I just got tired of her nagging. And every time she brought it up, I just ran out the door and I had to get away from it. Red flag. Okay. Thank you for that story, by the way, because now I know that you're a toxic person that can't deal with resolving conflict. You've got to run away. So you see this, you guys, this is your red flag. Somebody who can't sit down and work out conflict. 
somebody who's got to run, okay? And this is what covert narcissists do. They, you know, abandon the ship. As soon as the, the it gets, you know, gets hot in the kitchen, they run out. So they won't take accountability. That is a red flag. Or they give you the silent treatment. So how this person deals with conflict, go listen to my podcast on that. That's one of my best you know, podcasts on narcissism about how a narcissist fights because it tells you everything, all right? Because how somebody fights, that's going to affect your relationship. God forbid you say something that they don't like or you call them out for something, you're never going to resolve conflict with that person because there's no transparency. They will deflect. They will flip the blame on you and say you're the problem. They won't sit down and they will not own it and take accountability, or they will give you the silent treatment. Now, you don't want to deal with somebody who's constantly giving you the silent treatment. And that is a very good question when you're trying to delve into whether, you know, check it out, somebody, if they're narcissistic, is you can, you know, and you've got to do this diligently, okay? Diligently. You've got to ask them things like, oh, you know, did you guys get along? How was the relationship? Did you guys ever fight? And when you come out with a question like that, like, did you guys ever fight? Were you guys fighting a lot? Or what did you fight about? See, it's good to find out what they, they'll lie about it. Like if they were fighting about them cheating or something, they'll lie about that. But you gotta, you gotta read between the lines of the different things that they say, okay? And the other thing is, they may say something like, yeah, you know, she used to go silent on me or he used to go silent on me all the time and everything like that. Now, you know, 99% of the time, whatever they're telling you that their ex did is what they did, okay? Because a narcissist projects, you know, all these things onto their exes when it's actually them that was doing it. So this is how they tell on themselves. But when you dive into finding out about their past relationships, you're going to kind of know how this person deals with people. And remember the word, okay? You know, the most important thing, you guys, is... How they treated their exes, they're going to treat you down the line, okay? And I get a lot of people that come to me and say, oh, they look so happy with their new supply. Oh, they're so in love. Oh, you know, they're treating them good. And the first thing I say to them is, how long are they together, okay? Are they together 20 years? No, all right? They're only together, they just got together. It will, believe me, if you're dealing with a narcissist, it, you know, all that glitters isn't gold and it's going to, you know, break down in time because the narcissist is never satisfied, never happy, always bored. Okay. So it's a no win situation with the narcissist, whether it's you or the next guy or next woman or the new supply, they will be facing the same things that they faced with you. Okay. But it may take time. It's going to happen when the narcissist gets bored with them or, you know, the supply is used up or they don't get the supply or the new supply is challenging them, that's when that's going to break down and the narcissist is going to be prospecting for other supply if they don't have somebody. Because even when a narcissist goes to a new supply, guess what? That's not good enough. There's always another on the side, okay? Just so you know, all right, you guys? So you got to know the narcissist and know that, you know, these people... One is not enough, okay? One is not enough. The other thing too, you guys, is when we're diving deep into somebody, you want to just look at their pattern of behavior. I mean, that too, you, and it's not just the first three months. It's past six months. Are they still consistent with it? Are they still seeing you, okay? Are they ghosting you? If they ghost you or they disappear, red fucking flag, Red, 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 red flag when somebody disappears, okay? Big red flag. And you better not ignore that because that person is playing games with you, okay? And it's the same thing. I had a woman get on the post with the hot and cold and she said, oh, you know, he came on so strong in the beginning and then he disappears and he comes back. Well, when he comes back, what the fuck are you doing even talking to him? He disappeared on you. He disappeared on you because he's busy with somebody else. So why are you taking, why are you entertaining this person? Okay. The minute that somebody falls off, in other words, they all of a sudden disappear and they come back. No, 
Either you're in it or you're not in it. And if you're going to deal with the person and put up with that shit, you're going to be treated like shit, okay? I'm just going to say it like it is because you got to hear it, all right? You're being jerked around. So, you know, either somebody is real with it or they're not. And you, the way you got to look at it is this. Would they do that to their boss? No, okay? No. So why are they going to do it to you? You're not going to let them have it, let them do it, all right? You want people to respect you? You've got to command respect, and that means that you don't put up with that nonsense. And if you want to even give them a chance, well, anybody that disappears, that's it. Goodbye, good luck. But the thing is, if you want to, you know, give somebody the benefit of the doubt, even though that's the worst thing you could do, but if you, you give them one chance and you say, you ever do that again, you and I will not be talking, okay? And I guarantee if they did it the first time, they're going to do it again, okay? So... The point is, you guys, there's all different little clues into looking into somebody's background, okay? What are their friends like? What kind of friends do these people have? Do they have a bunch of partiers that are always out there playing around and they're hanging out with them? What type of friends do these people keep? Not, not that somebody that's playing around is necessarily the only ones that can, you know, cheat or something. You got very quiet people that are the biggest cheaters as well. So the, the thing is... You know, look at who they hang out with. Look at who their family is. Look at how they treat their coworkers. Look at how they treat their friends, okay? Are they making their friends a priority over you? Because if they can't put you as a priority, you can never have a relationship where you come together as one. And see, this is the thing with a narcissist. A narcissist puts other things as priority. That's why you feel alone in a relationship with a narcissist, because they're not focused in 100% on the relationship. See, when you get together with somebody and you get in a serious relationship with somebody, or you're going to marry that person, the two of you come together and become as one. One. You're a team, okay? You've got each other's back. But when you're dealing with a narcissist, they've got other things going on. It could be their family in the background that they're going back and talking to them about talking to them about you or their friends or a situationship somewhere and they're not completely focused in on you. And that's why I tell you, you've got to trust your gut. Is your gut is telling you that this person is not all there with you even though they're there in body but you feel like there's a distance or they they seem indifferent or they you know they could take or leave being with you or they're always on their phone they could care less whether they even talk to you you know all night long they're on their phone all night long or they just don't care that is a person that is not all in okay not all in now some people do you know business on their social media or something like that but if you find that it's all the time all the time what they're doing is they're busy with other things in their life and you are not the focus. You are not the focus. And that's the thing, you guys. These are all ways that you look into somebody to see if they're narcissistic. The other thing too, okay, if somebody came from an abusive household, a lot of abusers, a lot of a malignant narcissists, and I know this because I have them in my family, when you deal with a malignant narcissist, nine times out of ten, they came from a violent or toxic home, okay? So if you're dealing with somebody like that and their childhood, you know, they had a, a home where their parents were fighting and it got physical or something like that, and that person has you walking on eggshells, they could be, you know, similar type of person, especially if they're very controlling. And if anybody puts a hand on you, any, any little thing, that's it. The relationship is done because that's the tip of the iceberg of things to come. And it doesn't get better, okay? It doesn't get better. So these are all things that you look at. You look at, you got to, you know, you got to take this person, you got to put them under a microscope. And people say, well, why do you need to do all this? You need to do all this because it's your fucking life. And you're, you don't want to wake up one day and realize that you married somebody who was not who you thought they were, you have kids with them, and you end up in divorce court paying thousands and thousands of dollars, and you're fighting with them over custody and visitation and everything like that. And now you got to start all over in your life, and it's so hard, you guys, okay? Because I'm speaking from experience, and I'm trying to save your life. 
So the, those red flags, you better not ignore them, okay? And you better really take a look at, you know, the fruit don't fall far from the tree. So see, I dealt with a covert narcissist and I had a covert narcissistic in-laws, okay? And if I would have delved deeper and I really understood covert narcissism back then, I would have spotted this in a second and I would have got out of there, okay? But I didn't. I didn't know it at the time. And, you know, you got to forgive yourself. A lot of times you don't know these things. But the minute that you see that, you know, smile to your face, stab you in the back. And those are the worst kind of in-laws you could ever have. And I got to do a podcast on this because there's a lot of people dealing with that. They are troublemakers. They are fire starters. And they will break up your relationship and marriage. All right? People don't realize that when they get involved with somebody, when they're dealing with a narcissist and narcissistic family behind them. Okay? So this is what I mean when I say background check. It's not just about, you know, um, you know, running a criminal check on them. It's about looking at their childhood development, where they come from, okay? Where they come from. Now, I want to just put one little caveat here, okay? Because there is a saying that says, you know, where you come from, show me where you come from and I'll tell you what you are. And that's not always necessarily true because... There's a lot of people that come from bad homes or bad backgrounds that turn out to be great people, but those are the people that could self-reflect and realize, okay, you know, my family was toxic, okay, I came from a bad, you know, environment or something like that, a bad neighborhood, bad environment, but you know what, I don't want to be like these people, okay, I don't want to be like these people, so this is what you got to look for. All right. It's very, very, you know, rare, but you do have those people that came from that and they're able to self-reflect. And those are the people that can take accountability. All right. That's how you're going to know. They're going to be able to own it. They're going to be able to say, yeah, my family, you know, they're fucked up. Okay. (laughs) But when you're dealing with a narcissist, they'll never, ever talk bad about their family. Oh, you know, they'll never, ever, because they're still constantly looking for that validation from them. All right. They still want to, they never got that validation. They still want to get that validation. And you, you get involved with something like that. That is a recipe for disaster because not only you're dealing with the narcissist, you're dealing with those toxic in-laws or their family or something. And it's a nightmare because they can't see that they're toxic. All right. And you know, you don't want to be around these people, especially if you have kids, you got to be around it. It's horrible. Okay. It is horrible. You guys. So this is where you look into things. And you also, one last thing too, when you're diving in deeper, you want to see how much empathy this person has. I can't say this enough. When you're sick, when you're going through a rough time, the narcissist is either, you know, not really going to be there for you or they'll be there once and then they'll disappear. They'll ghost you. They don't want to be around for the bad times, only the good times. So you want somebody who doesn't just, you know, disappear when you're going through something rough. So you could test them out by saying, you know, I'm having a hard time financially right now. Or, you know, I've been home sick in bed and, and see if they call you to see how you're feeling. All right. Or they just say, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And then you don't hear from them the rest of the week. Okay. Red flag. Or, you know, are they still going to stick around when you're down? And that's so important, especially if you're getting a life partner, you're looking for a life partner because life will throw out a lot of things at you. People lose, you know, go, people lose their job. People get sick. And the last thing you want to have is a fucking narc next to you that has no empathy. Okay. Or disappears and abandons you. And the last thing you want is a narc around you too, if you have children, because you'll be doing everything for those kids because the narc will leave all the responsibility to you and make an excuse and disappear. Okay. They're horrible parents, horrible, horrible, horrible. So one of the ways of a background check as well is to say to yourself, could I trust this person in raising my kids? Are they responsible? Are they able to get their hands dirty? Are they able to do things that they don't want to do? Are they able to, you know, sacrifice their time to, you know, take a sick kid to a doctor and do things like that? And if the answer is no, 
goodbye, good luck, because you don't want somebody like that in your corner, okay? Because you'll be doing everything, all right, you guys? So this is what I mean about diving in and trying to, you know, look into somebody. And the basic thing is you want to just see what is their background character all about. And you'll know by their past history, okay? Where they've been, who they've been with, how they broke up with the person, and all of that is gonna give you insight. I hope that helps you. If it did, hit the subscribe button and please share the podcast and have a great day. If you guys are having a problem in your dating or relationship or you're dealing with somebody maybe that's narcissistic, you don't know if they're a narcissist or you're just having problems, you're in a toxic relationship and you need some clarity on it, go to the link in the podcast description for my website where I offer email and phone coaching. If you have a quick question, just a quick question, and you want to get a video sent back to you answering your question, there's also a link there for Vizio where I will send you a personalized video answering your question. Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and I want to tell you about my two books on Amazon. The first book is Regain Your Power. It's all about power and relationship. Who has the power in the relationship? And it goes into all of that, okay? The other book is Signs He's Not Into You, He's Wasting Your Time, okay? Check it out. It gives you a lot of good clues as to whether you're with somebody who's a real one or somebody who's just going to waste your time. You could read them both with Kindle's free trial membership. So check it out. Link is in the podcast description. Hi, you guys. I just want to let you know that The Game Exposed now has their merchandise available. Check out the link in the bio and you could go check it out. There's cool hoodies, cool sweatpants, cool hats. So go to the bio for the link. And also, don't forget to follow me on Facebook at the game exp 123 and also on Instagram the game exp 123 okay and have a great day